Good day all, Gavin Greenfield here again. I'm just going to talk to you briefly, primarily about how positive pressure ventilation can impact hemodynamics in a patient with LV failure or cardiogenic shock. We know that generally, most of the time, the hemodynamic effects of positive pressure ventilation the effects of positive pressure ventilation on the hemodynamics is usually harmful or negative. And this is a diagram that kind of summarizes how that can happen. We know that um, pushing positive pressure into the thorax, that pressure does get transmitted to the SVC and the IVC in the right side of the heart and can decrease preload. Okay, so if we decrease RV preload, uh, we're ultimately going to decrease LV preload. That same positive pressure can increase RV afterload. And that's through this phenomenon over here. Here's us right now sitting with wide open capillaries that go by our alveoli and stay open with negative pressure ventilation. If we convert to positive pressure ventilation and push that air into the thorax, you, can, you could visualize the alveoli expanding and putting pressure on the capillary that runs adjacent to it and creating this situation here. And you could imagine how if all the capillaries were like this, as opposed to this, that that pressure is going to be transmitted back to the pulmonary artery. And, and the pressure is going to be higher here because of all this constriction that's going on out here. And that's RV afterload. And so that will increase the pressure against which the RV must contract. And as the RV gets pressure overloaded, the, the septum can actually move over toward the left side, toward the LV and effectively decrease the volume of the LV, thus decreasing the LV preload. So those are three different reasons uh, that hemodynamics are usually negatively impacted with positive pressure ventilation. But let's talk about this right here for a second. So normally there's a very slight bit of negative pressure in the thorax relative to the left ventricle, especially on inhalation. And that makes, so you can imagine if there's a, a bit of negative pressure that's kind of stenting open this LV wall, when that myocardium has to contract, it does have to pull against that pressure just a little bit. So it increases the work that the myocardium in the left ventricle has to do. But if we convert to positive pressure ventilation, effectively, we're kind of giving a boost. We're kind of giving a boost, a push, to the wall of the LV with that additional positive pressure just outside the wall of that LV. Okay, LV afterload is marked by how hard the LV wall has to contract. So if we have a given afterload uh, because the patient's blood pressure is whatever, but it's the same in these two patients. So, so classically uh, afterload, so you could imagine somebody with high blood pressure that's a, that's a higher LV afterload. The LV is going to have to work harder to eject blood. This is why we see as a compensatory response to people with chronic hypertension, we can see LV hypertrophy and we can see manifestations of that on the EKG, for example. So let's say we have two patients with the exact same systemic blood pressure and they have no aortic valve stenosis. That also increases LV afterload. Their, their, their aortic valve is normal and they have sustain, the same, systolic, uh, same systemic blood pressure, patient A, patient B. If we add positive pressure to that patient population, we're doing this and we're giving that left ventricle a boost, an extra push. And therefore, to generate the same cardiac output, that left ventricle needs to work less hard in the patient who has positive pressure ventilation applied. So let's say that's patient B. So patient A is undergoing normal, spontaneous, negative pressure ventilation. Patient B is undergoing positive pressure ventilation. They're getting this extra boost, this extra push to the left ventricular wall as, as represented by these two arrows. And therefore, to eject the same amount of blood out into the aorta in those two patients, Patient B actually requires less myocardial work to do that. And there'll be less, less transmural pressure, less myocardial oxygen demand. These are all beneficial things. So where does the equation you know, kind of balance out? Because we still have these negative hemodynamic effects that we described at the beginning of this talk. And now we have this potential 
positive hemodynamic effect that we just described over here. And typically, it's the patient with that failing left ventricle, that patient in cardiogenic shock, that may benefit from positive pressure ventilation. You don't know where it's going to fall out in an individual patient until you try it. Um, but you could expect that the negative hemodynamic effects are going to win out in most patients, but that, that patient population, that cardiogenic shock, that patient with the failing LV, they actually may do better with positive pressure ventilation. And this is why NIV works so well in the patient with you know, acute pulmonary edema, acute heart failure. And you know, that's a patient population that we really have to intubate less and less these days because we are getting you know, better at applying non-invasive ventilation. And that positive pressure, now again, actually whether it's applied non-invasively or invasively through an endotracheal tube, the physiology is the same. But most of the time, that patient with the failing LV, if we put them on NIV, they do better. And that's because this effect wins out over the negative effect of effects described over here. So I'll just move on and summarize this. So potential harmful hemod hemodynamic effects of positive pressure ventilation are the decreased RV preload, the increased RV afterload, and that septal shift to the left that may decrease the LV preload. The potential beneficial hemodynamic effects of positive pressure ventilation are the decreased LV afterload. The left ventricle wall has to work less hard to eject a given volume of blood. And this may be especially help this may maybe especially be helpful. That's bad English, sorry guys. But this may especially be helpful in patients. Uh, let me just correct that on the fly. There you go. Uh, may especially be helpful in patients with cardiogenic shock. Okay, this, uh, this is a good paper. If you, this is an open access paper, so if you simply Google with some of the information presented here, the title and even that first author, the article will come up. And this is a good post in deranged physiology. Again, if you, you don't have to memorize that URL or, or, or even write it down, just deranged physiology affects a positive pressure ventilation, it comes up. So both of these are good resources. And uh, please fire any questions my way, and I'll just, I'll just uh, end with... Um, Actually, uh, yeah, I'll end with, give you that, just if you need to take a photo of it or something or get the information, and then I'll, and then I'll end on, on this. Okay, guys, thanks very much.